Back in March, the COVID-19 pandemic forced the closure of some businesses, especially in the tourism industry, um, and that industry has taken the hardest hit. The 120 days given for layoffs will expire soon, but there has been a call to have it extended. Here to shed some light on what employers and employees can expect is president of the National Workers' Union, the NWU, Granville Valentine. Hi, morning, Granville. Morning, Mr. Valentine. Hey, morning, Lydia. Morning, Neville. Welcome to Smile Jamaica. Okay, so first of all, at the beginning of the 120 days, what was the understanding between the workers and employees at that time? That when 120 days was over, we would be resuming work? Is that it? Well, the expectation normally is that um, after 120 days, depending on the circumstances, uh, the matter would have been assisted, assisted and... Um, you know, you determine where do you go from there. Mm -hmm. um, remember, as it relates to the pandemic, it is a, a, a time of uncertainty. So one could not uh, definitively say that, you know, after 120 days we'll come back to work. But it is a period of assessment. Uh, I think what happens as it relates to the 120 days, that the 120 days provided in the law, and uh, Section 5A, um, clearly indicate that there's an option. The worker has an option. But this option is cast in concrete and stone. And as a result, you know, we've been saying uh, at every level, the LAC at the local level with management that we would have had discussion and negotiation with, that what we need to do is to find a, a position that is, that is fair and just both for the employer, both for the workers. And whilst we represent primarily uh, the interests of the workers, we are cognizant of the interests, the national interests, and, of course, the, the management's position also. So, you know, we are very much aware of that. Um, we have been saying at the Labor Advisory Council and in other discussions with the hoteliers and uh, the tourist, tourist sector that there is a need for us to start talking, negotiating, to find a, 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 a sweet spot, so to speak, that all parties can live with. Um, we, we were getting a little pushback where I think people were being, uh, management were being advised uh, by their lawyers um, in some instance uh, of a different position, and that is what caused the major confusion. Now, what we have seen um, over the last few weeks is some response that are positive. For example, yesterday we were on um, RGR speaking with the JTA president, and uh, there is a clear understanding from that discussion. And uh, as a result, a meeting has, set, has been set up for um, 2 p.m. today to continue the discussion to see to find a place that um, everyone can live with, to negotiate and to find something that the workers' rights and justice are protected, but the business side of things are also, um, you know, taken in, in, in consideration. Yeah, Mr. Valentine, for the 120 days, were the workers given anything when they went off? Were they paid anything um, during this 120 days, or they were just sent home and that was that? They, they were sent home um, in, 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 in most instances, surely to, to my knowledge, um, without any pay. And that is part of our concern, the human side of things. Um, uh, some people speak, but they are not feeling that, that the pressure of a worker who goes day by day, from, from week by week, month by month, from paycheck to paycheck in order to survive yeah, and to take care of their family. Yeah, you were, um, suggested, you were suggesting that... You want to come to a place where it's good for the workers and good for the employers. Where is that place? Well, we believe that there, there, there are some um, loopholes, and we believe also the government should look at, for example, the care program, um, and uh, or we could negotiate around that, um, among other things. And, you know, when we are in negotiation, we don't want to say all the things that we would like to do, but... For example, there, there is a station that you know very well. We have negotiated um, to ensure, for example, we have contractual arrangement where increases would have been implemented during this period. 
We have relaxed those. Um, we have put some things on hold. Uh, there are some persons who would work part-time. For example, they would work uh, maybe three days out of the week. You would rotate some workers just to ensure that they, they, have, a, they, they have a bread, they have bread on their table. Yeah. Um, so, that, so there are many other ways also, and some, some, some that we are looking at as a team from the Confederation of Trade Union, um, where we will bring again to the table. And I, I am sure that, you know, this time where we, we should be able to find a way yes. to see our best. Because we, we are very considerate, uh, especially for the small business sector who really cannot afford the redundancy. Says you're right. Um, and we, we, have, we, have, we have emphasized to our members and to the working class people about the constant. We're not talking about dismissal, because redundancy is a form of dismissal. We're talking about retention. How do we all pick up back? You know, right. people may say, and, and I just want to make this point before you come in, Delia. There are, there are lawyers who are making um, suggestions that, you know, there's a lot of people out there who will take up these jobs and work part-time. Those, those persons must think of the fact that when you train, when somebody is trained, it is different from an unskilled or untrained person. They, 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 the level of performance and attitude at work that you are satisfied with today, you might not necessarily find that on the road. So it's important that we keep the team together. Um, we believe that the, the, the great encouragement must be that you encourage the worker not to as your first option, look forward on this day. All right. Um, how do we proceed from here, Granville? Um, the permanent secretary, Carlett Roberts Resden, says the, the, the Labour Ministry could not grant an extension. It would require legislative amendment. So is this now going to become uh, an agreement that's, that's crafted between the workers, the unions, the lawyers? How, is, how will it work? Well, the, 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 the PS is, is absolutely correct. Um, where this is something that would have to go through the, the whole gamut of the process as it relates to changing the law. Right. And, uh, you know, it would also become a vexed situation. And, and I must say this, um, we have been trying to amend or, uh, the, the law as it relates to the OSHA Act for 30, 40 years. We can't reach there. Why would all of a sudden this hurry rush to change the law as it relates to the protection of the workers. But I think we are, we are past that, and um, we are now sitting down to negotiate. And we, what we will do is amend it temporarily the arrangements that are in place uh, to ensure the survival of the, both the workers and the, and the employers. Uh, Mr. Grant, uh, Mr. Valentine, to be fair, you have said that you want to work with the employers also. They come up yes. and say, well, we don't have no money. So if they don't have no money, what, what are you going to tell them? If they say they don't have no money, what, what are you going to tell them? Well, you see, uh, the, the business, nobody has indicated to us that the business is bankrupt. Uh, the business will continue. There must be some level of funds uh, in, in, in the business. And you also must be aware that there are a lot of employers who would have had um, rainy day um, uh, provisions. Um, those persons are squeezing themselves in the midst of, of, of persons who are business people who are really um, going through a very hard time. Lot, lots and, of, sorry to jump in, lots of employers that you said what? Uh, would have had rainy day um, provisions where they would have made a okay, lot of profit okay, and they must yeah. have put something aside yeah. for, for crises of this sort, natural right. uh, act of God, etc. Yeah. Okay. I yes, understand. and I'm saying that they are squeezing themselves in the midst of of, of the person, the 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 the, 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 the business who will be suffering at this time, and we are saying that all of us, all hands must be on deck. The union and the workers are willing to work out meaningful ways um, to ensure that the business survives. Because without it, without the capital, there is no labor. Labor yeah. makes no sense. Yeah. So yeah. We, we take all of this in consideration. We think of the, the country, um, of course, the economy, etc. Et we think of the, the future survival of the business and the workers' life. So we, 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 we are not approaching it um, from any one side. We are, we are approaching the whole discussion um, with a view of coming to some uh, urgent and, and quick conclusion from a uh, holistic approach you right. know, to ensure that uh, all, is, all survive during this period. Yeah, man. Right. Thanks a lot for speaking with us this morning and take care of yourself, all right? Uh, the pleasure is mine. Thank you too. Yeah, man. Granville Valentine, President of the National Workers' Union.